Okay, I'm up on the roof. I got all my tools. Um, I pre-cut my wiring for my solar array. That way I know exactly how it's gonna run, where it's gonna start, where it's gonna end, and where it's gonna connect to the solar deck junction box. So here's my array. I have two rows. Here's a row and here's another one. There's gonna be four panels each. Um, in my case, I'm gonna have those run through two separate circuits, which is why I have drilled two circuits in my solar deck. See one on the very left, one on the very right. Um, so I got everything pretty much laid out and ready to go. As to where the wiring is gonna run, um, I'm gonna have a microinverter system. So the microinverters are going to attach on the top row, they're gonna attach to the lower rail. And on the bottom row, they're gonna attach to the upper rail. So the idea is we're keeping the microinverters close to each other. Every microinverter attaches like this, facing down, attaches to the rail like that. So up here, it's gonna attach like this, and down here, it's gonna attach like this. The reason why we're trying to keep the microinverters close is the, the wiring that comes along with the solar array typically has about four feet or so between um, connectors. Here's what it looks like. You plug these into the microinverters and you chain them together. Um, now the microinverter output is an AC circuit. Microinverter input is from every panel. Um, every panel's output is a DC output. DC input into the microinverter um, and then the microinverter output is an AC circuit. So this is the AC circuit and then you can chain up to mic and I'm using the in phase IQ 7 alpha 7A microinverter uh, and then you can chain up to 11 of these together. The reason why you can chain 11 microinverters together is keeps your maximum current uh, I believe it's a 1.45 amp each microinverter, so times 11 gets you right under that 15 amp max. There's about four feet of wire length in between, um, and in my case, the microinverters are going to be roughly 40 inches. Um, so I've got a little bit of slack in between, but that's why you want to keep the rails closer. So when I put a microinverter on the lower or the the top rail of the lower row and the bottom rail of the upper row, the distance between the rails uh, is minimal. And then that way you can chain from a microinverter on the lower row to a microinverter on the upper row. So I've determined that the best location for the solo deck is in between the top row and the bottom row, right about here. So I'm gonna have panels sitting right there panel sitting right here and right in between that's where I'm going to put my solar deck. That's going to enable me to have both circuits connecting to a middle point so I won't have any issues with slack on the electrical wire. So here's my solar deck. Here is pretty much I'm at the edge of the house so that is the very first rafter of the house right there. That's where I have my footings. I know my, that my rafters are 24 inches apart so Somewhere in here, I'll have my second rafter. Right there. Again. Right there. So I want to install this solar deck box right in the middle between these two rafters. I don't have to have the whole thing in between. I just need to make sure that my holes where I'm going to run wire through the attic, that these two holes are in between. So when I drill uh, using my circuiter, my hole saw, um, I'm going to use a hole saw here and I'm going to make two holes in the roof once I get the solar deck placed uh, and those are going to go between those two rafters. So you don't have to have the whole thing in between, just have to have the spot where you're going to be drilling holes in between both rafters. So now that we kind of have an idea of what um, which two rafters are going to be the edges of the solar deck. I want to place this thing. Well, first of all, I got to think about, you know, how is the, how are the shingle layouts going to go? 
um, ideally you're going to run this thing kind of, you don't want it overlapping an edge. So you want the bottom edge of the solo deck to be right above a shingle. So right around there, there is a template right up there. I'll show you the template here in a minute. Line up their solo deck right around there. and Put the template kind of on the edge and then we're gonna cut some of the shingles out. This top uh, part of the solo deck will slide in place and then the rest of the solo deck flashing will slide under the shingles. Um, so this is kind of roughly how you want to set it up. Bottom edge of the solo deck above the edge of a shingle and then you would cut your shingles around this using this template and then slide, obviously clear all the nails, uh, shingle nails, and then slide this in place. Then we're gonna mark our holes right there where we're going to drill. We're gonna remove the solo deck, drill the holes, attach our, um, I'm using liquid tight non-metallic flexible conduit, so here are the fittings for it. I'm going to attach them, slide them in, and then secure the solo deck onto the roof. Once that is done, the solo deck is secure. Then from inside the attic, I am going to be um, attaching my conduit with wiring. Be running the wiring from the attic through the holes, through the fitting, and then the wires will stick out, and then I'll have my wiring all ready to go. That's the plan. I'm gonna get to work here. I'm gonna use my template, mark exactly where I want it, and then start cutting and drilling into the roof.